Okay, this is video 12 of the Learning Maple series, and in this one we do integrals, both indefinite and definite, and we also do numerical ones. So let's get started. So like the other options in calculus, the nice thing about Maple is it provides icons in here to do the types of integrals that you want to do. Uh, you can actually find them under the expression, or you can also find it under the calculus palette. I'll choose this one here. So let's call it integral number one. And if I just simply click on this, and it says this is an indefinite integral, and then I can put in my expression, okay, three times x squared dx, and when I do, is it will do the calculation for me. Of course, I also can do a function, f of y, colon equals, sine of y times cosine of y. Let's see what happens when we do the, and we'll call this the antiderivative, because that's basically what it is. Again, I'll click on the icon. I'll, I can actually do this a function of x, and it will put the x in for the y's, with regards to with respect to x, and what it does, it will do that calculation. Okay. You'd rather just have it do the calculation with a command. The command is called int. So again, if I say int of f of x, okay, with respect to x, and again, that's all it is, it will do that calculation there. Of course, I could also have said integral of f of z with respect to z, and I would get something that looks like that. Okay. The other thing I should point out is it's kind of useful is that you can actually make plots out of this. For example, if I create the integral function of a, which basically does an integral, so in this particular case, we'll do a indefinite integral from zero a definite integral from zero to pi okay tab of oh say cosine of a times x times x all right so there that is actually a function and you can actually plot this indefinite integral this er integral as a function of a where a goes from minus three to three and it will look something like that uh, you can also do derivatives of integrals, and uh, that's all sorts of useful here. I'll pause here to let you reproduce. Okay, here are some practice problems down here. Uh, see if you can also do what I have just reproduced, and um, just to test yourself out. And pause now. And here are the solutions. This one should be straightforward, just typing it in. This one, again, is another, just type it all in like this, three i squared. It's the answer is i cubed. Little physics humor there. Okay, this is actually a function that's based on the limits of the integral. And if you plot it, it looks something like that. And what happens at this extreme point when L is a large value? Well, that's basically taking the limit, uh, really, essentially, when F goes to infinity. And there's our answer there. I hope you got some of those answers. Let's go on and do something else. Okay. Well, you've already seen, essentially, how we hit the... <laughs> how to do a definite integral, and of course, that's to click on the definite integral sign. So here's a function, okay, and we're going to do the definitive integral. So our integral is going to go from, it will click on that, it will tab from, oh, let's say x0 tab to xf of our function with respect to x, and let it go through, and it will do the calculation for you. Okay, um, the other thing way you can do it is not surprisingly is S1 could be equal to using the integral function itself, f of x. Again, x now is going to be a range starting from x0 to xf. Put that in, and there is the limits to your integral. Um, or there's the result of doing your integral. Not too bad. Now, sometimes some of your integrals aren't always going to work out nice and pretty like that. Oh, by the way, well, let's do one with, okay. For example, let's say I want to do, let's say my int is the integral from zero to infinity. Ooh, there's a nice extreme value. 
of, oh, let's say exp escape of minus a times x squared times x. So when I do that integral, I get this sort of weird result, and it has this x goes to infinity limit. And so it actually didn't really give me an answer there. So what you can do is you can help Maple by telling it something that it doesn't know. It doesn't know anything about A. So A could be positive or A could be negative. If A is negative, this thing actually goes to infinity. This expression goes to infinity. If A is positive, which is the case almost always in our physics calculations, we can just simply help it out by saying assume positive. And when we're doing that, it will do the integral with the assumption A is positive, and now it actually will get an expression for what is it going on. Um, you can actually add in multiple integrals. I'm going to do this one quickly. F of x tan equals A times the tangent of x quantity squared. There is our function. All right. And S2 is our integral, and where it's click on the integral button from essentially A tab to 2 times A of our F of X tab X. Now, if I do this, it's not going to be able to get an answer because essentially the tangent is going to blow up and it doesn't know anything about A. Well, one thing is you can help it out. In our particular case, I know A is positive. So I'll say assuming A is greater than zero. But I can also tell something about A is I can tell it that A is less than pi over 4. How do I know? Why did I choose pi over 4? Because it even tells me something about things are falling at pi over half. So this turns out to be the limit if A is less than, and that will make sure that 2 times A is less than pi over 2. If I put that in, and it will actually give me the expression. And again, I let you do this by hand if you want. I'll pause here so that you can reproduce it yourself. Okay, I should also point out occasionally Maple will come back with an expression you don't know anything about. So this is actually a definite integral which goes from some value to some other value. And again, what Maple's going to do is try to return the most exact expression. So it came back with this thing called the Fresnel function. It's kind of like a sine. It's like a cosine. There's all a bunch of functions out there. And this is, has it with the exact value. If you actually want to know what that value is, evaluate as a floating point, and it will return what the actual value is to a good approximation. But again, this is the exact value. All right, with that, here are a couple examples here. And again, I note that almost all the constants are positive. Okay, why don't you pause and see if you can try it yourself. And here are the answers, and I do it two ways, one with the icon, and one with the command as well. And again, helping it out by telling you that A's are constants. This one turns out doesn't know the alpha is positive or not. Okay, so what if we need to do a numerical integration? Here's a function. It has only x and numbers in it. And we want to do this calculation here from 0 to pi over 6. Again, Maple's going to try to do this exactly as possible. So I'll hit enter and you'll watch. It's going to take some time to try to figure out this, hand, uh, this calculation. And the answer is, it doesn't know how to do this calculation. Okay, there is no exact expression. But you can help it by saying you're happy with a floating point approximation. So if you're happy for a floating point, that means you would like to evaluate this integral as a floating point, and it will come back and do that calculation there. Another way you can make sure that this calculation is done as a floating point is, again, we'll click on this icon, zero tab pi scape over six times 1.0. And now the limit is an floating point value. So it immediately knows it's going to have to do this numerical tab f of x, tab x. And again, it will do that calculation there. The third way that I tend to do it is actually this way. I say my int value colon equals int. So I'm going to call the int function, which is the function that basically this icon produces. Again, f of x from x equals 0 to, and again, I can put in pi over 6. 
So there's my, and now I just simply add in the option numeric. And by doing that, it doesn't try to solve this exactly, but rather uses the floating point approximation. Um, the other way I might do it is using what's called, again, this idea of, of an inert version. So my int colon equals, and now I'm going to use capital I and T, and this will set up the inert uh, version of the integral, f of x comma x equals zero to pi over six. Okay. And so that sets it up there. Now I can essentially evaluate the floating point of my int. And it will do it there. Okay. Try it yourself. Let me make one other point um, because we are using inert versions. Again, all inert is just, just put the capital letter for INT or a capital D for D-I-F-F, or capital S for S-U-M, uh, when we do summations in the next video. It's kind of nice because it will do is it will allow you to see what integral is actually doing the calculation before you actually do the calculation. So here's our function. I didn't try to make it look fancy, and I filled it in, and yes, that looks exactly what I want to do. Now you might say, well, to, in order to evaluate, I need to evaluate as a floating point. But the problem is it's got the C in there and it doesn't know anything about the C. So it can't actually do that calculation. In fact, it doesn't even make any sense what's a floating point of infinity. So instead of looking for the floating point value, what you want is just the value of P. Then it will do the calculation. Hmm, this didn't work. I wonder why. How can I help Maple figure out what this value is? Well, again, in physics, almost all constants are positive. So if I tell it, assuming I can either say C is greater than zero or positive, and when it does, it will do that calculation and give you an exact value. Okay, try it as well. Okay, that's enough on integrals. Let's see if you got most of them right, and um, we'll move on to sort of the last aspect of multi or of single variable calculus, and that is summation and series. Hope to see you in the next video.